today we're making an envelope flapper, which is a perfect addition to a junk journal or maybe a folio. So an envelope flapper is four interlocking envelopes, each of which is decorated. So they look like this and they're just really fun and super easy to make. So they're made from just four book pages. So I've used pages from a big children's dictionary like this. This has glossy book pages and I've also used a couple of pages from my complete works of William Shakespeare. I've added pretty papers to each of the envelopes and a bit of paint, and washi tape. So this is definitely a fantastic project for just using what you have. They are great make ahead pieces. If you want to add them to, let's say, a folio, this is one I made a while ago. You could put them in the middle just like that and it's a lot of fun. It's interactive and it's interesting. Or you could also put them maybe on the inside cover of a junk journal. I added just a little double at the back of this one here. The process steps I have for you today, of course, to make things easy. You can find these in Pinterest. So let's grab our book pages and make our envelope flapper. So the first thing we're going to do today to make one of these envelope flappers is gather our book pages. And you want to gather four book pages, ideally in different sizes. So I'll show you the books that I'm using today. I'm going to use one page from this large children's illustrated encyclopedia. So this has got lovely images on, although some of those will be covered up. But what I like about this is not only its size, but it is fairly thick and it's glossy, which I actually really like for this project. This is about 21 and a half centimetres wide by nearly 28. So a pretty large page, eight and a half inches by, what's that, about 11. I need one of those. That can come out. And I think these are readily available in many secondhand bookstores or charity shops, thrift, thrift shops, if I can say that correctly. I'm also going to take two from a more medium sized book. So this is thicker paper. And again, what I like about this is predominantly a lot of the background is white. And I did have a bit of a play making this up. And I learned that for me, my preference is to have more white background in my envelopes. I'm also going to take a real contrast. So a beautiful page from a Shakespeare book of plays. It has gorgeous little font in it. And it's, it's a lot more delicate, the paper, but that's absolutely fine. It's going to be made up into a small envelope. So thinner paper makes that okay. So I'll just put these on the side. This one is a mere 14 centimetres by 20. And the medium one is only a little bit bigger than that Shakespeare page. So that's about 17 centimetres wide by 22. As you have a go at making these, you'll probably get a preference for the sorts of pages you want to use. And obviously it's a great opportunity for using up your book pages. So when we take our largest book page and make it into an envelope, we want the envelope to fit with a little bit coming out beyond in either the back of the junk journal or in the folio that we're using it in. So I do want to say at this stage, choose book pages that are the right size. So again, the largest book page will be made into the largest envelope and we want the height, so this dimension, to be not too wide when we put it on its side so that when we add a little bit more to the right and a bit of space to the left, it still fits in. So that is the only qualification for the book pages really and the sizes. Obviously when we make the envelope, we can reduce the size more, but that's just something to think about at this stage as we choose our book pages. So now I have four book pages. I want to turn each of these into envelopes. So one big one, two medium, and my Shakespearean small. And I'm going to use my wooden 
scoreboard. You don't have to have a scoreboard to do this. The technique works without. So I'll take my bone folder to score in the grooves and all I'm going to do is put a flap on either side of the long sides. These are, the first groove is about a centimetre and a half. So I'm going to put a groove down there and then I'm going to give it a bottom flap. So I choose to score at about the third indentation. You can have a play and see what works. As I say, the limitation or the consideration is make sure that when your envelope is turned on its side and you add about a centimetre and a half here, maybe a bit here, this will fit where you want it to go. Now I have worked out that I don't have a groove in the right place for where I want my envelope to fold in terms of the top flap. So at this point what I do is just go back over the creases to make life a bit easier before we do the snipping. So let's just recrease those sides and the bottom. And I want my top flap to fold to about there, which means that my envelope, oh, what a good guess, will be about 11 centimetres across here. It's just the size that I want. So this is an approach that gives you the flexibility to make an envelope flapper of any size that you want. All I'm going to do now is take out some of the corners. So I'm going to take my scissors and go just to the left of each of the vertical and horizontal folds to take out the corner at the bottom flap. So one there and one there. And I'll do exactly the same on the other side. Easiest if I turn over. Snip and just take that out. It's easier to see the creases if you've made them quite clear. So the bone folder does help. And then at the top flap, I go a little bit beyond. So I tend to go about a centimetre beyond that vertical fold and about a centimetre down, just so it looks a bit more like a flap. Same on the other side. So you see the cutting and the folding for this is super easy. Let's take a snip down there. And then all I will do is glue this Take a glue stick, maybe a, a glue stick rather than liquid glue. Run it down this flap because this is shorter than that. So you'll be guessing how far to bring the glue up if you put it on there. So a bit down here. Just fold those in and fold that up. And this gives us an envelope which will be fantastic in size for decorating and being the front of our envelope flapper. We'll do a little bit of technique on the front in a minute and that will go down there. So isn't that beautiful? So that technique is all we need to make three other envelopes. So what I've done is made one up with the medium size book page, a couple of those. And I've also done one with my Shakespeare, isn't that cute? My little tiny envelope. I'm, I've done a bit of decoration already on that one. So now we have the basics for putting together and for decorating to make our envelope flapper. So the next step is to add just a little bit of decoration of each of the envelopes and that's both front and back. And it's at this stage, I'd just like to get a bit creative and use maybe washi tape and stamps. You could use pencils, you could use paints. So time to have a bit of a play, whatever you feel like on the day. I've taken this stamp that I've used, I actually used this last week in my overlapping pockets, and I've just done a little bit of stamping so that it comes off the edge. I like to do that. And for the smallest envelope, I'm also going to add just a little bit of washi tape. I've got a lovely new one here. So this is from the washi tape shop. They kindly sent this to me. I like this deep violet flower. It's very powerful and I think I don't need I don't need the width but I do want some of the impact so and I'm just going to run a little bit 
up the side. It's got a bit of a sheen, this one. So it's got a bit of a gloss. I've also been playing with some foiled ones, which I absolutely love. So that could go on there. In fact, I could even, yeah, I've got space. I can even just wrap a tiny amount around. And I might be greedy and just go for a little bit of something else, maybe one with music notes, whatever you feel like. And on the back, I think what I'm going to do is, so this is going to go like that, flap open that way. So I think what I'll do is add a little bit of something on here. And again, washi's really quick. So why don't I just add a wee bit down there and a little bit of this fern looking one. You could do a bit more stamping on the back. You could take some watercolour paint and give it a bit of a wash. And I think that's all I'll do for my small, in fact, the smallest envelope. The next thing I'm going to do is decorate the two medium sized envelopes. So these are the ones that have a bit more collage on the front and also something on the back. And to speed things up a little bit today, what I have done is do the front already and I'll just talk you through those. So obviously add whatever you want. On this one, I added a bit of an old atlas as background to cover up the white. And then I've just added an image and I've gone round. I picked out the colours in the picture. I think these are Rockwell Design, Rockwell Craft Designs, I think is the Etsy shop. Lovely little images. I looked at the image and I saw green and brown. So I picked green and brown from my watercolour pencils, went round them and just released the pigment with water. And then I've added a little bit of a sticker over here just to complement the green and added a bit more washi tape. And then on the second one, I've got a slightly different design. I use this one quite a lot. Again, I covered the background with a more vanilla coloured atlas page. And then I've created the sense of a window, a couple of uprights for variety. There's a little bit of scrap digi, a little bit of beautiful teal paper. There's blue in this. I've added faux stitching and then I stamped over it and I added some lovely uh, metallic paint. So I think that's my Arteza metallic paints. So just have a little bit of fun on the front. You can see I've done something similar on one of the other flaps that I'd made. So what I'll do is just finish it off by doing the collage on the back. So let's just start with either and I want an image so that when the flap is down like that, I want an image here. And I thought I'd use some of my birds. I really like the birds in this design. Shall we have this one? But I'm not just gonna stick him down. I need a little bit of mat. So back to ye trusty. Gold's good, but shall we, shall we maybe go for green to give him something to sit on? Where's he gone? So a bit more contrast than the pure gold. Let's just take a bit of my collage paper and glue stick. I'm going to give him somewhere to sit, maybe like that. I might add a bit more washi as well for detail. So really enjoyable stage of the project, this. I'll get that on. Give him something to sit on, and then I'll rebalance at the top of it with some washi. These birds are a Tracy Fox digital, so check out her Etsy shop, which is where they reside. That's really nice, isn't it? Let's give him a bit more definition up at the top there. A bit of a black and white piano key style washi. Maybe Maybe one other, what have we got? I'm having a play with a bit of better organisation. So these are some washes that I have put on an organiser that came from stationery pan. Let's see if this works. That tore off quite easily. So easy to get your washi tape, just literally running up and down your desk, being naughty, telling you what a mess it all is. If I put, oh, hang on, hang on, I might have to do that. Let's get it the right way up. I was going to say it's too busy, but I actually really like it. 
So I've got a bit of collage on the back there. So that's the back of one, isn't that lovely? I'll take the other one and do something similar. So this is going to go with the flap on that side. So I want something upright here. I think I'll go for something that isn't a bird. Let's reach in a different pot. So my pot of interesting items. I want something probably, it's quite dark, not too busy. That's a good one. I'll just do the same again. So I'll give that a bit of a mat to sit on. Let's put some of this underneath. I think that would work really well. So I'll put glue on the front of that one so I can position it and not lose too many of the notes like that. And I get some glue on the back of that one. And I have some blingy stickers I might have a play with. I have a row or a roll, I should rather say, of it is like washi, but it's actually stickers. Can I do something with one of those? That's a cute one. It peels off really easy. This is washi tape shop and I love the botanical style. I think that can just go on there and I'll have a bit of green to complement that up the side. There we go. Maybe a bit of this one just there. So I've now got two decorated medium sized envelopes, aren't they lovely? So these will be the flaps that we add like that. So let's move on to decorating the large envelope and then we can pull it all together and just add something in the middle. For the large envelope what we want to do is add a little bit of decorative paper on the front. I've chosen something in a vintage style and I've also added some texture so I'll show you how to do that and what you also want to do is add maybe just a little bit of more collage on the inside and I've chosen for the large envelope to flap open to the left so I'm getting it upright in this direction with the flap on the right hand side just like that and to speed things up what I've done today is just already added a piece of beautiful vintage paper I haven't added those textured effects, so we'll do that in a second. And I've also done something similar as I did with the medium size envelopes. I've added just a little bit of collage and image with some washi tape and a little bit of packaging paper that I've added acrylic paint to behind. So to add this texture, I really, really like it. It looks, it's got that aging effect and it just looks a little bit random. I take a piece of bubble wrap and watercolour paint in this case it's surprisingly good and gives you that really lightweight paint effect and I just you can see I've used this before dab a little bit of my paint I'm steering away from those with the blue tone going more to those yellows that's what I like and maybe a little bit of brown just to tone it down and you don't need a lot of paint on. I think I might use this technique in some other projects. I'm going to go for bottom left and top right. In fact, why don't I have a bit of paper behind just to help. So I'll go for bottom left. Oh yes, not too much. And top right for balance won't take long to dry this because it's just watercolour. Let's see what we've got. And for a cheeky bit of contrast, I'm going to add just a bit of foil. So I'm going to use this gold foiled washi, maybe down there. Again, I think I'll halve it so that I've got one, at least one raw edge. Just add a little bit down there. And I'm going to add a bit more of my little leaf design on top. I like a cluster of two. It won't hide up too much, too much of the lettering, which I really, really like. So that is the large envelope decorated. And as I say, I've already done the collage on the inside, which means we've now got four beautiful envelopes to bring together. 
And then what we can do is decide how to just finish it off with something in the middle like this one. So to glue it all together, I've brought in the mat just because I'll use the lines on here to help me get things lined up neatly. I've got all four of my decorated envelopes. I need to tuck into the large one, one of the two medium size. So let's just pick one of those. What we're going to do is just glue the back of the flap onto the interior of the flap of the large envelope. So why don't we just do that? And then we'll do flap to flap on the second one. So glue stick all over the back of the flap of one of your medium envelopes. Remembering that you may have chosen to have an image the right way up. It might be directional when you collaged. And I like to just have these at slightly odd positions, not in the middle. So tuck it in to the crease of the flap on your large envelope. Just give that a little bit of a rub. So now we've got that one ready. And on this one, I'm going to tuck the teeny, teeny, tiny envelope into the flap of the other medium sized one. I'm trying to talk as I do here, it's not that easy. I'm not doing so well today. So let's get glue on the back here, again all over, and I'll just tuck that in where I want it to go, fold that flap over. And now I've got half ready here with a gorgeous bird ready to peep out, which I think goes incredibly well with the green foliage there. And I've got some washi marrying up. I love it, it's coming together. And I've got a double here. So now what we want to do is bring the two together. And this is where we want to be just a bit careful about positioning. So I'm going to get this smaller pair to glue on top of the large flap. I want to do it in a way where this one tucks out to the right. Let me show you on one that's done. So when this folds in, we can still see something tucking out here. So I'm going to just be careful about exactly where I position this one. So what I'll do is add a little bit of glue on here and find where I want that to go. I'm going to line this up against one of the lines just so that I know that's positioned well and it's upright. And then I want to glue this one so that this sticks out a little bit beyond here. I want to see it. So I'll use my, let's get it neat. I'm just gonna use my lines here to try to get this to be upright as well, just so it's a little bit tidy. There we go and press that down. I don't want that to stick out too much because then it would be too big compared with the journal cover. Shall we just do a test? So if I were to stick this inside my junk journal, if that was going to go on there, that would just about fit in place and I'd have enough room to open that up and obviously that could flip out there. So I've just about made it narrow enough. So what we can do now is open up, whoop, it's coming together, and just fill in a little bit here. And I wondered whether we should carry on. I've got some purple, the violet, which is in that washi tape. I think that would work well. And I've got a couple of images. I actually think this one will work really well. I like the purple following through. So I've got some bits of paper here. So I'll have a little bit of this. I think this is Victoria Designs. So I'll use an off cut of that. I don't really want, I don't want a, a straight edge. Maybe something like that. And I think I'll give it a little bit of something extra as well. Just go over there. Make sure that you're not covering up your flap fold on the left hand side. I really like that. I do like that. I think we need to give it a little bit of contrast. So 
I'll have something down the left hand side. And I'm going to put something darker around just to make the edge of it be a bit more defined. I'm not covering up the gold. Envelope flapper from Four Book Pages. Check out my playlist, it's linked down below. And it has over 50 tutorials making envelopes, pockets, tags, collage strips, all sorts of ephemera for your junk journals. I hope to see you soon.